Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Q&A with Mary-Kate and Sean. We're very excited that they're here with us today to oh, wow. ask questions and hang out. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. So, um, throughout the Hangout, you can ask any questions that you want, and, and I will ask them appropriate ones <laughs> that I see fit um, using the hashtag AskMKSean. <laughs> AskMKSean. That's a bit of a tongue twister there. Um, yeah. Or you can just put questions in the YouTube comments. We have people monitoring both areas, so we will see them, and they will get passed on to me. You can also come and join us in the Hangout. We have a few people who are going to be uh, coming in in just a few minutes, and you are also welcome to come join us. Just tweet using join MK Sean, and we will DM you a link um, to be able to come in. So make sure you're following the Seahorses on Twitter. That mm -hmm. way we can DM you. Yay! So I'm going to go over, let Mary-Kate and Sean introduce themselves and the project they've been working on recently and stuff. They've been working with Shipwrecked a lot, which is fun. Do you want to go first? No, you can go first. All right. Hey, people. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Mary-Kate Wilde. Um, and some stuff, including Kissing in the Rain by Shipwrecked. What? There's a very big branch under my foot. Um, and I'm here with Sean Prasad, who is one-third of Shipwrecked. Hi, I'm Sean Prasad, and I'm one-third of Shipwrecked. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like being a third of something? What? Is it, what is it like being a third of something? Does that um, like diminish you in any way? Yeah, I, feel, I feel pretty empty all the time. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Just be a whole part of something. Um, so, Sean, Sean, you're part of the team at Shipwrecked. What is your third of the team? <laughs> <laughs> what is your third? What are you bringing to the table here? Obviously, you're acting a lot. Uh, my third of the team is every now and then I have dinner with Sinead and I find out what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I, mean, I, I know Sinead writes some um, as well as acting, and then Yulene yeah. obviously is yeah. doing like lots of writing, producing, directing. Do you do yeah. any writing? I do. I haven't for this yet, but um, Sinead and I are working on something right now that mm -hmm. hopefully will be finished at some point. <laughs> I have a problem with finishing things, so... We'll Understandable. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about Kissing in the Rain for people who maybe don't know. I'm hoping that people watching know, but just in case. Well, Kissing in the Rain is a web series that is mm -hmm. currently going on. Our chapter has finished already. Um, but there is a second chapter that is currently going, starring Sinead and this fellow Cyrus Graham. Is that his name? Mm -hmm. Great. And it is about actors that have to that find themselves doing just that, kissing in the rain over and over again. As you may know, our our characters did not care much for each other, at least in the beginning. Whereas I believe their characters do have crushes on each other. It's pretty, pretty dramatic, pretty suspenseful. It's very suspenseful. It turns at every turn, double turns at every turn, just keeps you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> so, and this project had the fan cannon going along with it. What yeah. was it like working with that fan cannon and seeing all these stories come in that then got like canonized for your character? Was that a weird experience? Cool? What was it like for you? It was weird. I was a little more nervous about it at first than I than it turned out that I needed to be. I don't know. I just was like, what? How is this going to work? We have our own head cannons. What if people go like way crazy and off what I intended? Yeah. But that wasn't really what happened. It, it stayed pretty much in the realm of, mm -hmm. of what I had imagined. What about you? Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect at all, um, and it was pretty interesting. I don't know. There was stuff that I, I disagreed with that I was like, no. But I learned that, that I just wouldn't put that in my head canon, which is a word that I learned 
<laughs> I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Well, so I'm curious now, like, can you give an example, or is that, like, you don't want to reveal what you didn't agree with in the fan canon? Uh, well, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> don't want to offend anybody. That's fair. That's fair. Um, cool. Well, I'm, like, waiting, because we're about to have people come in, and I don't want to steal their questions. Um, but we're having lots of questions come in from people from Twitter and stuff. So uh, Saw Blue asked, what was your favorite Kissing in the Rain episode? That's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite to film was the, uh, the Edgar Allan Poe one. Me too. Um, That's your favorite? You were very, very wet. That was not the most wet, though. That's true. That's true. It was fun. It was that was a fun one just because um, because I wore a mustache. It doesn't take much to uh, amuse me. <laughs> you wore a mustache and that made you happy. I ended yeah. up wearing a mustache in that episode too. It was great. It was fun. It was really fun and Wait, unexpected. You, you wore a mustache in that episode. Um, Sean's Sean was Sean was so wet that the mustache was disintegrating and. I was getting parts of it in my nose, so there's that. <laughs> that sounds really romantic. Pretty romantic, you got it. Very uh, glamorous. I like that episode a lot. I really enjoyed shooting that episode. I think my favorite episode to, like, the finished product is either the... Probably the sixth episode, the 40s episode, I liked a lot more than I expected to. It's also the longest one. I also really like the, the last one. Yeah. But I like those two a lot. You got to be yourself the whole time in the last one. I mean, yeah, yeah. Nice. So. I guess people were surprised by that. I Obviously, like we knew that's what was happening, so that wasn't a surprise to us. But I was surprised that so many people didn't realize it was not going to be a movie and were like, Ah, it's real life. <laughs> because in the like preview, you could see us, you know, being like modern day. But yeah, yeah, I it definitely caught me off guard. I wasn't, I was happy about it, but I wasn't expecting it. So it was nice. Cool. Um, well, we have Jenna and Rami uh, joining us. Hello. Before we go to them, we have a follow-up from Rosie Ramblings on Twitter about the fan canon, wondering if they, uh, what was one of the more surprising things that came out of the fan canon about your characters. Um, I thought it was kind of cool. The the uh, they made me gluten free, <laughs> and I am gluten free. You're that both gluten free, and you both are gluten free. Yeah. Did you say <laughs> Do we, we look, look it? gluten free? <laughs> No, you you both were gluten free, oh. and you both are. Yeah, we well, look you look very gluten free. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a hard question. I was really pleasantly surprised by. I actually thought people were gonna hate my character. Like, I really totally expected her to get a lot of uh, backlash because she's not very nice. Um, but people were actually, like, so intrigued to give her, like, a reason for not being nice and really dig into her as a character, which I thought was very cool. Um, I like, I think, I don't remember if I got, no, now I'm in trouble. I don't remember if it got canonized or not, but, like, I get sick after the third episode, and then you, like, bring me soup, and it's really cute, mm -hmm. and... Oh, it's just really interesting to see what everybody came up with. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the bringing you soup got canonized, but you definitely did get pneumonia. Yes. At some point. Pneumonia. Also, I think I mentioned this in the live stream we did. I was surprised that I only had one friend. <laughs> like, like Lily had Pam, and that was it. <laughs> like no other friend that she talked to, <laughs> which is fine. And for the sake of simplicity, like probably better. <laughs> She's, she's you know, it doesn't surprise me though. Lily seems like somebody who would kind of like push a lot of people away. Yeah, no, no, it's true. But I hope that she would have like more than one per person to talk to. But I think by the end we gave her like another friend. <laughs> awesome. 
Well, let's, we're going to go ahead and go to Jenna's question first, and then we'll hear from Rami in a, in a second. So welcome, Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hi. Hi. I was wondering if it was hard getting into character for each episode since you didn't have a complete scenario for them. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, not really, because uh, it was fun to try to, to try to come up with that try to fill in those blanks for ourselves. Um, I think uh, the challenging part really was that we filmed so much so quickly. So we only had like, we only filmed one episode for two hours and then all of a sudden it was off to do another episode, different characters completely. And um, I mean, I think that was a little bit more challenging. And it was totally out of sequence. We shot like the fifth episode first and then we shot the episode before that, after that, <laughs> which, like, you're used to, but I don't know. This yeah. series is very linear, so it was kind of... Sorry. Something's going on. Los Angeles. Um, I, the thing for me that was challenging was just that I wanted to make all of... And I don't know how well I succeeded at this. Shut up! I'm trying to have a hangout. I live right next to a fire station, so... That's fire. so pleasant. <laughs> Don't they know who we are? Well, we're very safe, so... Yeah, there you go. Um, no, but what was challenging was, like, making sure that each character was very different, even though you were only seeing them for, like, sometimes, like, 30 seconds to a minute. Mm -hmm. and don't have a lot to build off of, but that was kind of important to me, was to try and give them each, like, different... I mean, there's just not a lot you can do in that amount of time, but I tried to... Obviously, the costumes and the hair helped and stuff, but, like, give them different, uh, like, voice tonation and and then, of course, like, have a very abrupt, like, difference between the character and Lily mm -hmm. after the cut. Mm -hmm. um, that I actually, like, really was kind of freaked out about it. I was like, oh, I have to really do this and, like, not screw it up. So. What well, think we... Hmm? So I think you pulled it off. Thank you. It was good. We did spend time before each scene kind of talking about what, like, was going on in the movie that we were shooting and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Was it hard? You know, you, you mentioned you were coming into these, like, just jumping straight into the scene with little, like, prep time. Obviously, like, Eileen talked some about how part of the project was to get to write and shoot these really emotional, emotional climactic points. Was it hard to just have all of these, like, bam, climax with no, like, build-up before or after? Or was it kind of fun for you as an actor to get to just do all the high points? That's a good question. I think it was more fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was a challenge, but that's, that's part of what I think is. <laughs> I feel like, in some ways, the... 40s episode is the strongest because we, because it's more of a scene uh, mm -hmm. and we like very clearly decide, we had a headcanon of like what is going on with the characters mm -hmm. um, so that helped like helped me get there anyway also Sean is a wonderful scene partner and um, was very present and it just, you know yeah, yeah. What what was your headcanon for your, for your characters in the 40s episode? Can you tell us? Um, you know, yeah. uh, we decided that, which is not apparently what Yulene <laughs> had thought was happening in this movie, but we decided that I was engaged to somebody else, or my character Mary was engaged to somebody else, but I actually was in love with George, and he was like, well, I'm leaving you're not going to be with me. And I was like, no, but I want to, but I can't, but I want to. That's all. I like it. Thanks. Fun. It's good. Cool. Um, we'll go ahead and go over to Rami and her question. Hi, Rami. Hi. How's it going? Hi. I'm okay, I guess. It's like past midnight. I was going to oh, say, it must geez. be late there. Yeah. But yeah. All right, thanks for staying up to know what kind, what your worst kiss stories are. Like, what was the worst ever kiss you've ever had? <laughs> I don't know. How much alcohol was involved? 
Um, mm. The first on-screen kiss I ever, ever had to do was awful, just, like, atrocious. Also, it was really weird because my boyfriend at the time was directing, and it was me and his best friend, and it was just a bizarre situation, and he just was, like, attacking me with his lips, but, like, like it was gross and weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, I was in an acting class once, and we were doing a scene, and there was a kiss, and uh, uh, I, I went in for the kiss, and she pulled back, and she was like, oh, I'm really sick, I can't do this. Yeah. And it was this amount of humiliating. Oh. <laughs> How many people were in the acting class? You missed out. What? How many people were in the acting class? Uh, I don't know, like 15, maybe. Mm. Whatever. I don't think about it every day. <laughs> Rejection doesn't define you in any way. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and how do you feel about glitter? I know MK knows why I'm asking. Yeah, but... I'm all about it. <laughs> I don't think you need to ask me. How do you feel, Sean? I don't. No, you I... You like... You feel good about it. Do I? Yeah, you feel good about it. Okay. <laughs> I feel good about it. I feel great about it. <laughs> Excellent. That's all it means. <laughs> that sounds like it's said with a certain degree of... That sounds like it's said with a certain degree of reluctance. Yeah, well... <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. You have a rapid answer. answer. Um... <laughs> We'll go, we are going to have um, Claudia come in in just a second, but I'm going to go to another question from Sablu on Twitter wanting to know, is it difficult to, as an actor sometimes to separate your feelings from the characters? Well, I really, really hate Sean, <laughs> like, with a burning, yeah. burning <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. It's true. Yeah. We're not actually in the same place. This is a really good green screen. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just like a case by case basis, I guess. I don't know. It depends. Yeah, I don't. It's never been super hard. I don't think for me, but part know. of the job. Yeah. Part of the job, I guess. You kind of have to like give yourself the space to indulge whatever, like, feelings or whatever, like, relationship you are fostering. But you have to remind yourself at the end of the day that that's your job. It's weird. It's a weird job. <laughs> we do weird things. I definitely, like... We get paid for it. <laughs> we get paid for it. Last year with, like, Lydia, I definitely, like, let myself get really sad for a while. Um, because I felt like it was necessary for the storytelling. Um, so that was a time that I maybe probably could have held back a little bit, but I don't, like, regret it. Mm -hmm. But then other things, like, other times you just show up to set and you do your thing and then you go home and it's done and it's just, it's mm -hmm. just your job. Yeah. yeah. Um, finding this an interesting parallel because I have the same thing with my work, like, some days I leave it there, and some days I don't. So, yeah. Yeah. it's true. Ways that you know acting relates to lots of other professions. Yeah, I guess it's just like anything else like that. Well, cool. Well, we're gonna go to Claudia now. Hi, Claudia. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thank you. Um, my question is, what was your favorite part just about filming Kissing in the Rain? Like any memory that kind of stands out that was just like a funny see, like a funny time, or um, we okay. I'm sorry, I'm always talking first. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, so in the first scene, I run up these steps at the very beginning because why not? <laughs> Um, these steps that are like soaking wet, like covered in water, and I'm in heels. So after we shot each scene, Sean would very graciously help me walk down the steps. And I don't remember how we got on this. 
But you confessed to me that you enjoy Fallout Boy. Yeah. Well, you said something. You like quoted a lyric or something. Yeah, and you got it. Yeah. And I was so excited. I was like, wait, hold on, what? <laughs> nobody likes Fallout Boy. But me and Rachel, and I just was, and I think the next thing I said was, I dressed up as Patrick Stump for Halloween. <laughs> you were like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go over here now. <laughs> um, that's when I knew it was a real, it was a real bond, it was a real friendship. Well, up until that point, I knew one other person that liked Fallout Boy, so it was kind of huge. My Fallout Boy <laughs> fandom like doubled. Doubled. <laughs> like five seconds. It was a very exciting moment for yeah. me. Yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, for me, boy, I don't know, um, the last, the last episode we filmed, which was the prom episode, uh, we, f it was like 1 a.m., <laughs> and I think we both assumed that we were just gonna call it quits and do a pickup day in January, um, and, uh, we didn't, we just kept shooting, and it was kind of, uh, I did, yeah, it was it was kind of cool because I didn't think we could pull it off. We were both exhausted, and um, the water was really getting to me. Uh, but the uh, Yulene wrote, rewrote the episode like on the fly, and and it was like really really super gorilla style. Zach like went hand handheld, and we Zach's just sort the of, CP, the cameraman. Um, okay. We just sort of busted it out really quick, and it and it turned out really well. So. I would like to take this opportunity to point out that um, <clears throat> I had the good fortune of not getting wet very much of the time, and Sean was getting wet all of the time and was very wet uh, for two days, like, straight, and he did not complain once. To you. And I was the one that was actually like, um... We need to give Sean a break. Like he's really cold and wet. Yeah, yeah. but I Aww. looked cool. So. <laughs> he looked. Cool. He looked pretty cool. Well, you're a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Awesome. Um, we had somebody on Twitter ask, um, when did you guys first meet and was that the Telltale Vlog, I guess? Was that the first time you guys met? The direct question, what was it like? I don't know what that means. <laughs> what was it like? When did well, you guys the, first the side parted <laughs> and the sun shone down. And a uh, marching angel. band came through. <laughs> An angel sang. And she was on this chariot. <laughs> yes. Um, no, we met uh, a couple days before we started filming Kissing in the Rain. Um... And Did you film that before a Telltale Vlog? No, we didn't. We uh, didn't. Meet. Po? We filmed a Telltale Vlog in July, um, and then we filmed this in December, and I met Mary-Kate, like, two days before we started filming this. Yeah, okay. We did, like, a little table read, and it was, um, it was fun. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. Awesome. Great. Very cool. Um... Yulene wants to know, who are your favorite directors? I can't think of any. <laughs> I basically don't like directors. No. I can't think of a single one. <laughs> no. What a little weasel. No. Yulene. <laughs> Wait, favorite directors to work for or in general? I open-ended. She doesn't specify. So I would say both. Like, who would you like to work for in the future, and who have you enjoyed working with in the past? <laughs> uh, I like Wes Anderson a lot. Yeah, he's cool. I think we both do. Um, oh, I also like Peter Jackson. Surprise. What? I'm really? shocked by that news. Have you heard of Lord of the Rings? Mm, hey, rings a bell. I have a six-hour version of King Kong, if you want to watch that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Out. <laughs> um, I like uh, I like David Fincher a lot. I know he does this thing where he has his actors do an absurd amount of takes, 
and it sounds really obnoxious, but um, I feel like it works. Like, at a certain point, they just sort of give up. <laughs> it sounds terrible. <laughs> and then they actually, and then he gets, like, a, an interesting, different performance out of them. Um, that'd be cool. And Yulene. And Yulene. For both. Like how you work. just basically said, Sean, you want to work with somebody who just makes you get to the point that you just want to give up. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as I'm dry, I don't really care. <laughs> Masochist of you a little bit there. <laughs> um, well, we're going to um, go back to Jenna for another question. Yeah, just a simple question. What's your Hogwarts house? Which, what's our what? Hogwarts house. Oh, house. I'm a Gryffindor. Um... I was told I was a Gryffindor, also. You were told. <laughs> by people, by not a hat, but. <laughs> I Gryffindor. was told by the hat from the movie that I'm a Gryffindor, so. I went to the museum and I put that hat over my head, and that's what it said. Not allowed to do that at a museum. Yes, you can! At the WB. <laughs> Museum. You can get, you can put the hat on your She's head. She's escorted out by security. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that, sorry. Awesome. So two Gryffindors. Though, Sean, I think that you should probably take a proper test. We can link oh, yeah. you good ones. Sure. Yeah. I'll do it right now. Good. Not right now. We want you to be focused because we really <laughs> want you to give your attention to to the test. Do it properly. Okay. Yeah, it's important. Very important. Crucial. <laughs> um, we're gonna go to Claudia for another question, and I'm gonna look up some more questions. Oh. <laughs> what is your personal headcanon for your characters and their relationship, or just your characters themselves? Themselves, like, like, what? like, where do you think? Well, originally when I thought of this question, I was thinking like, where do you guys see them in like five years? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm. Which sounds actually like a better question. So. Hmm. Well, clearly they're having great careers. So, <laughs> to be honest, I'm pretty jealous. Yeah. I feel like James is is working his way into directing. Oh really? Yeah. Really. Just, just came up with that. <laughs> but canonize it. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm really bad at... People ask me that about Lydia all the time, and I have no idea. Like, I'm really bad at coming up with headcanons for my characters, like, in the future. I can come up with backstory, but, like, I don't know. I have a really hard time. Um, maybe, maybe our characters will still be together having successful careers. Maybe they will beat the Hollywood odds. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> there are there are fanfics about about them having a baby. <laughs> I I saw that one in the tags. I haven't read that actually. I don't yeah. think. Oh, I I see all the baby fanfics, all of them. <laughs> it's a little weird, but I mean to read. I keep writing. Everybody write your fanfic about whatever you want. Totally cool. It's a little weird to read your characters. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I hope Lily gets to do some... I would like her to get to do some young adult, maybe, novelization to movie things. Just want her to get to have the career that I wish I was having. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good aspirations. Um, kind of follow-up to that. Did you guys feel like you related much to Lily and James as characters? Um, and did you... While you're reading the fan canon at all, there was some like fan reactions to the two of their characters that were canonized. Did you relate at all? Did that like reflect any experiences you've had with real fans? Does that make sense? What? <laughs> what do you like, mean? <laughs> like, did you re relate to Lily and James? And then the like, Lily and James had. A lot of like fan reaction to them, like 
there are less people like shipping them in real life and things like that. And did you relate to their experiences that were canonized as well? Yes, in some ways. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I did. Um. I mean, I think I am like the character. You think you're like the character? Yeah, I just didn't relate to the fan stuff, I guess. Right? You haven't had girls swooning over you, trying to get you to sign marriage certificates? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the time, totally. Um, I mean, that didn't happen to me so much, but I sure saw it happen to other people in the past year or two. So I had that to yeah. draw from. Yeah. I don't super relate to Lily in terms of her personality, but sh I based her off of somebody I know a little bit. So there's that. Sorry, my nose itches. Um, I actually thought... Mm, this sounds really weird. Mm, how do I say this without sounding really weird? Maybe I can't say it without sounding weird. Maybe I can't. Maybe I won't say that. People were not so interested in us as ourselves as they were our characters for this project, which uh, was surprising to me in some ways. But Yulene mentioned that she thought that was because, like, they were encouraged to, like, get into the characters' lives and everything, and so that was kind of a surrogate for... You know how I saw people act about Ashley and Daniel during LBD. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, our fan base was a lot smaller than LBD, too, so there's that. But I just, I kind of expected people to, like, ask us about ourselves more and, and what and we, and we care more about. Right. <laughs> so, but Lily that's okay. Is great. Who doesn't ship Lily and James? Right. <laughs> um, we're going to go to Hannah for a question, and then I have a few that I'm going to pull from Twitter. Okay, oh. my, my question is, um, what was your favorite part of the whole fan canon experiment? What about it? What, what was your favorite thing about it? Oh, oh. yeah. Hmm. I don't know. That's hard to say. There was a lot of really cool stuff that came out of it. Airplane. Um, for me, I, I mean, I don't know if this is a cop-out, but just the fact that people did it uh, mm -hmm. and checking tags on Tumblr every day and there were just people really engaged in, in every episode. And, uh, they got, you know, you guys got really into it and that was really, really, it was really cool. It was really weird to see, like, people writing about us, our characters, but it wasn't, it was more... Um, It just it made me really happy, I guess, rather than weirding me out. Yeah. I also like the fan mixes. Those were cool. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was pretty interesting to see how everybody imagined, like, the industry to be and life as an actor in L.A. to be. Um... Because sometimes it was, like, very not close to what it's like, and other times it was very much on the mark, which was really interesting. Um, or just, like, life in L.A. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was, really, it was really funny to, like, read about their day-to-day -day lives as actors and be like, no, that's not how it is. Or, or wow, yeah, this person really knows what they're talking about. Um I don't know. It was cool. It was cool yeah. to see everybody kind of imagine that for them, considering that that's like kind of what we do. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. We're gonna go um, back to Twitter. We have a question from Casey, wanting to know if you've ever kissed someone in the rain before you filmed Kissing in the Rain. I don't think so. I have. I don't think so. No. It's. Very impractical. <laughs> Are you now like, turned off to the idea completely since you've done it so much? Uh, you yeah. <laughs> A little bit. Okay. I wasn't even very wet. 
I mean, if that's where you got to do it, <laughs> you can do it, you know. If, but if, if you can like, if drunk. you can like wait ten seconds and get under an awning or something, <laughs> I would recommend that. <laughs> Um, follow-up question from what Eulene was asking us all yesterday and asked us on Twitter. What was your first kiss? Age, location, were you the kissy or the kisser? <laughs> we have to share this with the whole world? Everyone. You don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have to. It's their first day on set. It's an off. With each other. <laughs> oh, uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. I uh, I've had to kiss other people before and things. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I was not very young at all. For mine, and uh, I giggled after it happened. <laughs> I started laughing. <laughs> Similar to how you're laughing now, or uh, I just was like, "Haha, that happened," and now I feel awkward and weird about it, so I'm just gonna laugh. And that guy did not get a complex. Oh, uh, that guy likes gentlemen now. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe he always did. I don't know. <laughs> he seemed pretty into me at the time, but I, m I might have been wrong. And yeah, I was I was in later high school, like later high school. So, hey, I was in college. So, okay, I feel like everybody's like I was thirteen. I'm like, uh, no, no, I was like twenty one. Oh, okay, you guys are making me feel better. You're cool, you're totally cool. Thanks. Um, so. my. My first real kiss was not very, um, it's not, there's not a good story about it. Um, I was also not super young. Um, and, uh, but the first kiss I ever had was, I was in a production of Romeo and Juliet, and, um, and we were pretty young, we were 14, and the director, <laughs> she, because we had to kiss, so like everybody was like giggling behind our backs, so the director was like, as, a, as, an, as an exercise, she made all the, boys and girls line up across from each other and like kiss each other um, and so I went up you know it was my turn and I walked up to this girl and her and she was just like <laughs> and I think I blacked out after that I don't remember <laughs> actually kissing her but I was like what do I do with this <laughs> I don't know that is an interesting experience yeah yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of good questions coming in from Twitter and YouTube. I want to just throw out a reminder to everyone watching that uh, if you do want to actually come and join us, you are definitely more than welcome to. Just tweet uh, at the Seahorse and the hashtag join MK Sean. We will have to DM you, so you need to follow us back, okay? Um, and that'll be awesome and great. And now I'm going to go right back in to the comments I have coming in. We had a follow-up come in from Twitter. Um, we kind of touched on this some, but uh, Rhiannon Denae wants to know if you ever feel stuck in a character for a few minutes after you end a scene. Do you have to take a couple of minutes to shake them off? Um, have well, however you want to. Yeah, sometimes. Again, it just kind of like depends. Uh, definitely if it's like a really intense scene, um, then it can be hard because it takes a lot of work to get your brain into that space. It also kind of takes some work to get out of it. And if you're doing take after take after take, you don't really, you kind of just want to stay uh, in that headspace as much as possible. So. Yeah. Yeah, there have definitely been points in my career where I kind of had to like go home and like take a shower and like give myself like some time to get out of it, which is usually only on things that are like really like terrible and like miserable mindsets. Um, <clears throat> I guess because those are, I don't know, those are just heavier than like happy fun things. But uh, yeah, yeah, it just is, it just depends. 
Okay. Awesome. Um, we had a question just for you, Mary Kate, from MC Burtz on Twitter, wanting to know how the experience on Kissing in the Rain was different from your experience with uh, the LBD. Um, well, LBD was different from everything in every way. So, <laughs> LBD was different because it lasted for a year and it was ongoing and people watched it. Not that people didn't watch Kissing in the Rain, um, they did and were very happy, but like a lot of people watched it and people were very vocal about it and some people really didn't like things and it just was its own monster in so many ways and you know we just shot for two days and then we waited a few months and then it came out and everybody was pretty nice about it and got into it and that's cool and got to play multiple characters and not just one person so I don't know just pretty different in a lot of ways um, awesome. Every project is different, um, you know. It's different from Squaresville in a lot of ways, and yeah. Cool. Um, Sean, we also had a question uh, for you uh, from Casey, wanting to know what your favorite. I didn't write this episode. Uh, what? Which was your favorite episode to do a voiceover for? Oh. Uh... I mean, ooh, um, I don't like them all. Um, my favorite was, um, I think my favorite was Ode. Ode, yeah. Which one was that? <laughs> what was the the one at the Santa Monica Beer. Yeah, that was my favorite uh, uh, poem to record. Um, it was kind of weird to film that one. Why was it weird? Mm. Why was it weird, Sean? <laughs> well, the Santa Monica Pier was, was very crowded, and we were just sort of like guerrilla filming, and and then we had to do a spinny kiss, and there were just a bunch of people. That <laughs> may be like the most awkward, like, yeah. like for, like fake kiss I've ever had to do. Yeah. We were both like, no, I don't yeah. want this. Maybe this one doesn't need a kiss. There's so many people here. We're in the middle of all these people. Please don't. Yeah. We oh. did it. That was my favorite to record. Um, I, think I, record I think we recorded them all at the same time. Um, and then my favorite one was the, uh, the hike. That's my favorite, too. Yeah. Which is what? As I walked out one evening? Is that what it's called? Sure. We know stuff. I think so. I really like that I think one so. as well. Allison asks, as we're kind of on the topic of poetry feel, if you have a favorite poem. Hmm. I feel like this is one of those things that I'm not going to be able to think of, and then later I'll be like... Oh my god. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, I love Shakespeare's sonnets. I love, I don't remember which one, god, I'm a terrible English major. <laughs> I don't remember which one it is with the one that's in Sense and Sensibility that's Love is Not Love, which alters when it alteration binds. I also love another one. What is with the pl jet planes? Holy cow. I also. One of them. There's also one that I love that's in the Fault in Our Stars, actually, that talks about um, that talks about like time being a slut. <laughs> like it's like about death and like time. I had to learn it at one point, <laughs> and then when I read the Fault in Our Stars, it was like, oh yeah, that's that one I really like. Clearly, they mean a lot to me because I remember. <laughs> Are we waiting for me? I don't rem I don't know that this is I'm gonna think of it later. I also like the I ate the plums that were in the freezer oh, which you were saving for yeah. breakfast one. They were delicious. I feel very embarrassed at my lack of poetry knowledge right now. Uncultured. Uncultured. Yeah. I took um, a class in college, I promise. Excellent. 
Well, we are going to go over to Katie, who's joining us. Katie Kempshire. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Are you art goddess, you? <laughs> um, okay, well, I was wondering if either of you had a favorite costume during filming, or if you have, like, an interesting costume story or situation or anything. My interesting costume story is that every time Sean walked out in his clothes, I was like... <laughs> Why don't guys dress like this anymore? Uh, hello. Uh, yes, please. Um, everyone, every single one. Everyone. Yep. Um, oh. Mary Kate froze for a second. Bear with us. You don't really get to wear. Dresses like that too often, so it's fun. I like the uh, 30s outfit. Had like a a vest and a pocket watch and a hat. That was kind of cool. cool. Uh, the the pants were way too short for me though. There's a picture I think <laughs> posted of me just like leaning against a wall, and if you look like from my knees up, I look pretty cool. <laughs> but if you look down. <laughs> I look like a kid, like a, going to a bar mitzvah or something. <laughs> um, I just see a theme here where you really like any situation that makes you feel cool. What? I'm noticing a theme where you like any situation that makes you feel or look cool. Oh, yeah. That's like every situation, right? Yeah. You are, you're just very cool. Especially this situation. <laughs> when have you been the coolest? <laughs> <laughs> He's very cool. This, is, this has been the coolest I've felt all day. <laughs> Today. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had a question for you, Sean, because I know, like, I don't know you that well. I'm still getting to know you as a person. And your Twitter handle, you have, like, MD after. So I'm feeling like at some point, correct, you were going into medicine. Yeah. Is that true? That's true. So, like, what's the story there? Like, when did you did you give that up for like the acting dream or like? <laughs> what? I'm just curious. Tell me about your life. Well, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I was I went to school for um, I did pre med, and um, I mean I've been acting since I was little, and I, I it was always something I wanted to do, uh, but it never really seemed viable, um, and. Uh, so, yeah. So I went to school for pre med, and then, um, and then, and then, like my junior year, I, I sort of snapped, and I was like, I, I can't do this. I hate this. Uh, and I started doing theater, um, at school, and um, I eventually finished uh, doing all the pre med stuff, and um, made my made my parents happy, and then I moved out here to do this. And um, and I put MD at the end of my Twitter handle for for my parents. <laughs> the closest to being a doctor I'll ever be. You did that for your parents? Yeah. Do you appreciate that? I don't even think they know what Twitter is, so <laughs> I think I I should choose a better way to acknowledge that for them. <laughs> but yeah. um, obviously your sister uh, Sinead is also acting and writing. Like, which one of you guys? went into it first. Who's older? <laughs> uh, I'm older. Okay. She will love that question. <laughs> so did did you start acting first and then she like copied you? Or like what's yeah, the story? Everything I did she copied. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, well I yeah, I we made like little movies when we were little and um uh and then um, I did. I was part of a Shakespeare group, and she also did that when when she was old enough. And then um, I worked at a. We live right next to Salem, Massachusetts, and I worked at a museum there, giving tours, like in character. And it was sort of like a Jungle Cruise situation where we just told really cheesy jokes, and then uh, and then she ended up doing that too. But, but um, she uh, she to do film like she knew exactly what she wanted to do and she went and did it and so I kind of uh, kind of jealous of her uh, in that regard 
Awesome. All right, well, we have a question coming in from YouTube, and I know Rami has it too, so I'm going to go ahead and let her ask it so that it'll be out there. Why is there a plastic child hanging in the top right of the window? <laughs> yeah, I would like to know. And it's like chilling we out, tanning, know. relaxing or something. It's like it's chilling really out, relaxing, scary. relaxing or cool. Not, I can not turn it away. away like. What is that about? I, I don't know. I hate it. Can, can you can... please bring it over? No! Yes. No! Please! No. <laughs> please bring it over! I don't like it. What is it doing? I don't like it. No, I'm can you just leave it there? Thank you. It'll be taking over. Oh my god. It's, it's beautiful. Is, is I feel like we walked into a horror movie. <laughs> Why is it that? I'm sorry. No, just leave it there. Ooh, beautiful child. But yes, why does it exist? Uh, it's a great yeah, question. Yeah, why does I, it exist? I don't know, but we have a lot of weird stuff here. We have like old TVs that we hollowed out and planted stuff in and... I don't know. I've never seen it before until today. Honestly. I live with five people, so sometimes that stuff happens. Who do you think it belongs to, then? I have no Out idea. Out of the five people you live with. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go back to some Twitter questions. Um, this is a fun one we had come in from Twitter. Describe a moment where you felt most like the protagonist from A Telltale Heart. Don't respond if it's because you killed a person. <laughs> Your faces are the best. I don't. I don't understand. Um, a time when you felt intense guilt, or like you were going to be caught for doing something. Oh, well, that time I killed somebody. Yeah. <gasps> but you're not supposed to respond. Um. She's Damn. not very good at killing people. <laughs> Secret though. Um, Why? I don't. I don't. I've never done anything bad ever. Ever. Okay. Noted. Um, uh, I don't think. I. I don't. Um. I don't know. I don't think I. I, am terrible at feeling like that. At, like guilt or like being caught doing something bad, so I've never really put myself in that position. Yeah, I don't do bad things because I'm so scared of getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Cops, like I'm terrified of cops. <laughs> so I'm like Ben Wyatt about cops. <laughs> Noted. Um, my follow up with that, obviously that's an Edgar Allan Poe story. Sean, you did a Telltale vlog. Mary Kate, you were in the birthday one. Do you guys have a favorite Edgar Allan Poe short or poem or novel? Um, I think my favorite is the Cask of Amontillado, because um, it's so absurdly depraved. For reading that when I was little, and I could not believe, it's so disturbing. Um. It really sort of stuck with me. I think the only one I ever had to read was um, The Fall of the House of Usher. I don't remember a lot about it, <laughs> to be honest with you. I have a terrible memory. I really do. I really have the worst memory. English me. You know what? I did what I had to do to get a piece of paper that says I have a degree. You graduated. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but I like I like post stuff, I guess. Okay, all right. I really liked the draw my life they did about him. <laughs> you that guys was... have watched that? You really need to. It's hilarious. <laughs> it was. Sean, your Poe was just incredibly hilariously wonderful. Thank you very much. Very accurate, I think too. Definitely. <laughs> I've never loved Poe more. <laughs> Um, well, I'm going to pop over to some of our random fun questions we had coming in. Well, hmm, hold on. First, I'm going to go over to a Kissing in the Rain 
question that we had come in from Aaronic, I'm assuming from YouTube, um, wanting to know, do you check the kissing in the rain tags on Tumblr often? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sean, do you have a Tumblr? I don't think I follow you if you do. Sorry. Yeah, you do. He has a great Tumblr. You should all follow it. I should follow. Pictures of mountains. A lot of mountains. Mm -hmm. um, some parks and Rec gifts. Lots of Parks and Rec. Some tunes. Some tunes. Com some a comic now and then. Every now and then I like to mix it up with a comic. <laughs> but mostly mountains. So. Why mountains? They're beautiful. They are beautiful. I love mountains. Have you climbed any mountains? Have aspirations to climb mountains? Yeah, except um, I, I got to do it in like a day. I got to be up and down in a day. I got to be back home in my bed at the end of the day. If there's a mountain like that, I'll do it. Okay. But I'll just look at them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not big on camping. Noted. I get much either. Here's a new one. Life. A bed and a shower. <laughs> My sister. She says the same thing. Yeah. Um, Pretty smart. <laughs> Saw Blue on Twitter wants to know if you were a book, what book would you be? If we were a book? Yeah, if you were a book. Farmer's Almanac. <laughs> I don't know. How do you answer that question? Do you answer by your favorite book, the book that's most like you? I guess the book that requires to be like you. It's most like me. The Cask of Amontillado. <laughs> yes. I hope that's not most like your life. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Shoot. Kind of, what books would you guys be? Anybody? Anybody? I feel like this is definitely a difficult question. I would probably say Anne of Green Gables, only because I related to her ever since I was little. That's probably a good one. That's, that's maybe close to my answer. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I don't know what book I'd be. What book are you in? This would be the oh. be. I love that book. That's a good book. I love that book. Yes. But yes, the awkwardness is basically me, so this book. Oh. <laughs> Oh, fangirl. I would be fangirl. Ah, also a good answer. Yeah. That entire time, I was just like, yes. Yes. I love Kath. Yeah, it's great. I would be an Encyclopedia Brown book. <laughs> I didn't ever read any of those. Sorry. Disappointment. I don't know. That's a hard question. It is. It's a unique question for sure. Um, follow up, similar vein, Bria asked, what is a recent novel that you enjoyed? <laughs> I'm really failing all these book questions. We want you to be much more literary than you apparently are, Mary Kate. Clearly, even though I like to hang my hat that I, on that I am. Well, let me say, if I were a book, Sense and Sensibility is a strong contender. Mm, mm, mm. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Wait, are you Marianne or an Eleanor? Well, I have both. Mm. Okay. Which is good. That's the point of the book, is you need both. I'm perfect, so. <laughs> no, I mean, I definitely... I'm probably more of a Marianne, and I need a little more Eleanor, but I have both. Um, what's the last book I read? Maybe... Oh, no, I can't. Shut up, bird. Isn't it a Is that a bird? A it sounds like a dog. Yeah, it's a bird. Yeah. It sounds like Sean has a dog that he's torturing. Scary bird. Wait, wait. It's like a sick bird. Wait. Thanks Maybe for the blood scared of the baby. <laughs> yeah, probably is scared of that Game baby. Of no, fangirl. I was yeah. about to say Game of Thrones, and then I was like, that was a year ago. Please let me have read a book since then. <laughs> I haven't. I don't think I've read a novel in a while. I've been reading a lot of nonfiction. Um, mm -hmm. 
I like to learn things when I read. <laughs> well, what's your favorite nonfiction book then? My favorite ever? Ah, uh, I don't know. I um, I read recently uh, Going Clear, which is about Scientology. It's really good. It's really, really messed up. <laughs> um, and I just finished the um, uh, Chuck Klosterman book, um, I Wear the Black Hat, which is really interesting. It's about villains and like the concept of um, villainy. Um, and he manages to say a lot about that. And in some cases, he manages to say nothing, which I find maybe even more impressive. He does like a whole chapter on Hitler and says nothing. It's pretty cool. Would I you did... consider yourself more of a villain or a hero? Oh. He's too nice. Yeah. He's like the nicest person. You're not it's a villain. True, I am. You probably could play a pretty good villain. Yeah, maybe. When did you say this? What? At one point, Eileen was like, "Sean would play a good serial killer." <laughs> and I was like, "What's your best villain face?" <laughs> what my villain face? Yes. <laughs> that wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wait, I don't know. That's a scary villain face. Um. <laughs> yeah, that was um, good. That was terrifying. Uh, I have to say, you can kill me puppies. Oh, no. No. That's, no. no. I would never. <laughs> good. I would put um, dolls on can candelabras. Candelabras? I would mispronounce words. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> that would be my super villain thing. <laughs> Can't get up for us. <laughs> yeah, what? It's a the language is alive. And you use words for a living? <laughs> well, Yulin tells me how to pronounce them all. Ah, uh, that's the secret, I see. Um, we had come in from Lara Leon, one, on YouTube, wanting to know if you didn't live in America, where would you want to live instead? New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. London or Edinburgh, second mm. and third. Yeah, I'd say London. London's pretty great. London's cool. London's not pretty great. I live here. It's not pretty great. I've been there, Rami. I lived I there. Lived there. It's not that I lived, great. I lived like there for two years. It's great. I like it. I miss well, it. Of course, it's great. But for better, people who grew up here, it sucks. It's better than all the U.S. major cities in specific mm. ways, but I guess. But it's but like, I was only there for a few months, so I understand. The transport system is the best. Yeah, I will yeah. Give you that. that's why. It's real good. I wish we had that. <laughs> How's the LA traffic? Awful. It literally makes you miserable. It just is the worst thing in the world. It's not okay. It's not the worst thing in the world at all. There are far, far worse things than LA traffic, but it's really awful. You listen to. Ah! Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Um, <laughs> okay. what is the question? <laughs> LA traffic. Uh, you listen to a lot of podcasts. Ow. Are you okay? Yeah. You just got very upset about LA traffic. <laughs> I thought I had you guys not to let any <laughs> LA traffic questions through. <laughs> Sorry. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. good. Awesome. Well, we're going to bring in a couple more people. We have Greg and Allison joining us. Um, Greg and Allison. Awesome. If one of them has a question they're ready to go ahead with, you can go ahead. Greg, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to ask if you guys play any video games and what are your favorites? I used to... There's a really scary bird up there, you guys. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I used to play Tomb Raider a lot. And I liked it a lot. 
when I was like young. <coughs> Pretty weird. Um, and then I played The Sims, and that's probably the last video game I've played. Oh, I played some game where you were like comic book characters, and you fought each other like Mortal Kombat style. What's Marvel that? Versus Captain. No, it was oh. it was like one word. Oh. But you could be like Harley uh. Quinn. <laughs> All the different Catwoman and all the different people. Um, that that sounds like Injustice, maybe? Yeah, that's I what it was. I might be wrong, I'm not sure. That's what it was. Yeah. Injustice? Is that what it's called? I think. Look, pretty good it at sounds, that. It sounds like what you're, what you're describing. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, no, that was it. Your turn. Mm. Um, I play um, uh, Grand Theft Auto and... Red Dead Redemption. When those come out. I played them for about a month, and then um, <laughs> if I haven't beaten it by that time, I just sort of I just lose interest. Um, I and I play like sports games because I like that they're over in half an hour. I feel like I've accomplished something. I mean, not really, but yes, me too. All right, cool. Thanks. The nature oh, out we here. We should have done this inside. <laughs> <laughs> the nature adds a nice, like, unpredictability to it. Sure, it does. I don't know if nice is the right word. Uh, terrifying, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bird sounds like it's dying. Decide it's crap on your head. Yeah, I know. That would be awful. <laughs> um, Greg, what games do you like? Oh, um. Well, I mean, I recently got uh, MLB 14, the show, so I've been playing that a lot recently. Yeah, that's um, right. And I also, I mean, I like Nintendo games, um, like The Legend of Zelda, and uh, the the new Mario Kart is coming out at the end of this month, so I'm super excited about that. I like Mario Kart. Yeah. Um, I used to play, like, those games like Donkey Kong and I played Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, they had they're opening a barcade down the road for me. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? So that sounds a, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay. City of City. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, there you go. And at Disneyland, they have um, Fix It Felix Jr., which is the game from Wreck It Ralph. Uh huh. Oh, cool. And that game is actually a lot of fun to play. More blossom. Where is it? So at Disneyland. Um, it's in the Starcade next to this, um, Space Mountain. Okay. That's awesome. So forever in Tomorrowland. Yeah. You should check it out. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. We're gonna go over to Alice now for questions. Hi guys, watching. Just FYI, we're going to be wrapping up here in the next like 15 minutes. Um, so if you have any questions, get them in the YouTube comments or the ask tag. All right, I have a couple questions. One is mine and one is a friend's. So number one, what is a song that you never get tired of? God, so many. <laughs> I know, it's a mean question. It's hard to choose. <laughs> Maybe one that, that you can't, that you're obsessed with at the moment? Um, well, my favorite band is Weezer, and oh, the yeah. just celebrated its 20th anniversary, good lord. Um, and pretty much every song on there, I will never, ever get yeah. sick of. The, I think the, the, either the guitarist or the bass player of Weezer actually went to my high school. Oh, really? Random oh, cool. trivia. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I'm going to cheat and also say an album, um, which is my favorite album of all time, I believe, uh, which is The Crane Wife by The Decemberists. I've had it in my car for like a month. It's one I just keep in my car, like on loop, and it also just makes me feel better. Like I can turn on The Crane Wife and like feel okay about life. Yeah. Which is nice. That's awesome. Yes, I love them. Yeah, cool. good question. And then also, um, this is from Hannah on Twitter. Um, who do you think should end up sitting on the Iron Throne? 
I'm not as informed, unfortunately, in this matter. What do you think, Shen? Aria. Mm -hmm. Ah, all yeah. right. Wait, you were in School of Thrones. I feel yeah. like you should have an opinion on this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, listen, you guys, listen. I started watching the show, and it was very violent, and I had a very hard time not being grossed out, and so I said, I'll read the books first, and I want to read the books, because I like that kind of thing, and then I'll know what's coming, and it won't be so, like, shocking. So I read the first book, and I enjoyed it quite a bit, and then I haven't... I haven't finished the second book, so... Why is Joffrey the best person ever, then? What? Why is Joffrey the best person ever? I know that's not true, but here's the thing. I know everything that has happened in the show. I know every spoiler. I know every plot point, because it's impossible not to. So I really don't know what I'm holding out for anymore. I should just watch it, or... I don't know. It's just so violent. Also, a bit of a fun fact, I saw the actor who played Joffrey with his trousers down a couple of months ago. That's cool. <laughs> so that's the only time I've ever met him, with his trousers okay. down. He or has a reputation of being a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Also kind of drunk at the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's um, <funny>. Excellent. <laughs> um... We'll have another question from Allison, and then we're going to um, go to a question from Lizzie that I think will probably start to wrap us up. Um, who was your first fictional crush? Fictional crush? Yeah. Like, character or something. Mm. I was really weird as a young person. <laughs> this continues. Uh, I didn't get... Well, I guess I got crushes on people, but, like, on fictional gentlemen, but I mostly just wanted to be them. Like, I <laughs> loved Peter Pan, and I didn't want to be Wendy. Like, yeah. I wanted to be Peter. I also wanted to be Robin Hood, and then I wanted to be Hook Finn, and then I wanted to be, uh, what's his face? The Artful Dodger. Two roles Elijah Wood has played. <laughs> um, so I guess those were also Basil of Baker Street. Loved him. All right. He's a mouse. <laughs> Wanted to be a mouse. So I guess those count, but it was not just a like crush. It was a like, I think they are so cool that I want to be that cool. Yeah. So don't touch me, I'm green, which is what I, I would tell people. I'm with you on Robin Hood, for sure. I, uh, I, I watched that movie on repeat when I was a little kid. Yeah. The Disney version. Yeah. With the too. foxes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you bet. Great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was uh, Courtney Cox in Masters of the Universe. Cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> you don't need to. It's not a great movie. I did fall in love with David Copperfield, not the magician, when I read that book, but that was in high school. Okay. Oh. I wanted to be Agnes. Awesome. All right, I think we're going to go to a question from Greg, a question from Claudia, and then we will close with a question from Lizzie. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So, Greg. Okay, um, so my girlfriend Casey wants to know, Sean, if you've seen the LBD. <laughs> I've seen some of it. Yes, some of it. I've seen, a, I've seen lots. A handful. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You mean you haven't watched all ten hours and read all the tweets? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can let you borrow the DVDs if you want. <laughs> uh, look, there they are. Yeah. There we go. Um, I would like to take this moment to uh, correct my answer for who should be on the Iron Throne and say Ben Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. I Actually, can't take credit for that. People on Twitter are asking me to say that. But you know what? I don't disagree. Then, since it came up, we have a question coming from uh, uh, Liza uh, wanting to know what your favorite Park and Rec character is. Uh, uh, how can one ever choose? 
I mean, isn't it Ben, though? No. It's well, Andy. It may be Ron Swanson. Andy. Oh, Ron. <laughs> Leslie. I know. They're all so good. But you guys, when Ron tried to eat a banana. That was amazing. That was, like, the best 30 seconds of television when ever. Andy does anything. I know. It's so good. Oh, that show is the best. Except I didn't know what to think about the season finale of the season, but whatever, it's fine. All right. Uh, we'll go to Claudia. Um, it's actually kind of two questions. The first one is, what's your favorite Disney movie? Mm. And then the second one is, if you could be any Disney character from, for, like, if they made, like, any Disney movie into, like, a live-action film, which yeah. character would you want to play from which film? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Basil Baker Street. You'd be a great Basil Baker Street. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to be a mouse, but you'd be <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> I got my ways. Okay. Um, you, you go. My, okay. This is a very difficult question. My favorite Disney movie is Tangled. It's actually one of my, like, top five favorite movies. Such a good movie. And and by that note, I probably also would love to be Rapunzel. Um, but also Maleficent because, like, come on. How cool is that lady? Let's hope yeah. that movie doesn't suck. But I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> I would, like, walk around when I was a child, like, stroking my imaginary raven with my two metal fingers like she does. She's so cool. Mary Kate, I'm a little more concerned for like your mental stability now than I was a second ago. I don't know why my mom was surprised when I told her I wanted to be an actor. That's all I did as a kid was pretend to be Disney characters. <laughs> Seriously. Solid. Alright, well we are going to go to Lizzie's question and then I think kind of wrap things up here. So Lizzie? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I was going to say, what is your, like, what would you define as success in your career? What would you define as success, like having a successful career? How would you define it? That's a big question. Oh boy. <laughs> That's something I, I think we both struggle with all the time. Because uh, you'll, because like, no matter how successful you are, you always kind of want more. Like, if you start booking a lot of guest stars, you're like, well, why aren't, why can't I book a series regular? And then when you do that, you're like, well, this is boring. I want to be in a movie and I want to get nominated for this or whatever. Um, for me, uh, success is just sort of like, being content in just enjoying what I'm doing. And if it's not exactly what I want to do right now, just knowing that, you know, down the line that might change and enjoying what I'm doing for what it is, I guess. Um, and an Emmy. <laughs> well, everybody wants an Emmy, but not everybody gets to have a certificate on their wall and... <laughs> no problems anymore because everything is amazing once you win an Emmy life changes <laughs> <laughs> that too. um I don't know I think uh, surviving this windstorm would be a success I think I uh, would just like to be in a place where I am working fairly regularly and being able to live and pay my bills solely on acting work, um, which I think is a lot more difficult than a lot of people realize. Um, and not a lot of people get to do that. So I hope that that happens someday. <laughs> that would be nice. But yes, I am of the same variety, and I will never be satisfied. So I need to learn to be content. I think we all struggle with that in life. It's not just an acting problem. Yeah, that's true. 
Um, I would like to say I think my favorite Disney movie is, well, it's The Lion King or Toy Story if you count that. The first one? Yeah. I'll accept it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted you and didn't let you <laughs> tell your favorite movie. I'm sorry. Just don't do that again. <laughs> Who said, you the Lion King? Rami. Rami. All right. Well, it's not my favorite either. <laughs> it's just not a good film to watch while you are drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, all your stories are you being drunk. <laughs> Come to Chris. Anna, Elizabeth, you just tweeted at me, and that's a nice thing. Thank you. I saw that. Um, well, it has been wonderful having you guys here. I know that you guys have stuff going on this afternoon, so I don't want to keep you... Um, too long over that. I guess just lastly, if there's anything that you want to um, say to the fans watching um, or to anybody, and also if there's any upcoming stuff you want us to be looking out for, are you guys going to be at VidCon, uh, etc. Um, I would like to say thank you. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for coming and asking us questions and hanging out with us and watching our show. I was legitimately surprised that as many people watched our show as did. Sorry, there are jet planes. Southwest. Um, I don't really have anything to plug. I have movies that haven't come out, but you guys, I already have told you about that, so... Um, I don't know what I'm allowed to say about VidCon, but the chances are probably pretty high that I might be there. So, and uh, I don't know. I don't know about LeakyCon. I I have no idea about LeakyCon. So, I would love to go back to LeakyCon, but life. Um, yeah, I would like to say thank you. Also, this is really cool and not something I'm used to. So it's really cool that everyone. Uh, watch the show and, and is really uh, interested in all this stuff. And I will be at VidCon. I think I'm allowed to say that. You are. I, I will be at VidCon. Um, yeah, that's that's it. It's not like awesome. That. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, well, it's great to hear from you. I know that we'll be keeping an eye out on stuff you have in the future. Um, make sure you follow them on Twitter because I'm sure that's how they'll uh, let us know things. And then follow the seahorses for whenever we get more Q&As organized. We don't have any to announce right now, but we have a couple maybe in the works. So Thank you, seahorses. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Hey, bye. Bye.